We are starting off the show tonight with some breaking news coming in right this minute. India Space Agency, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has just a short while ago issued a statement. Uh, this is regarding the Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission that, remember, had successfully made a landing on the lunar south pole. Now, in the latest that's emerging at this point regarding that lunar mission, ISRO is saying that the Pragyan rover on board the Chandrayaan-3 has unambiguously confirmed the presence of sulphur on the lunar surface near the South Pole. Now, ISRO's announcement signifies a monumental leap in our understanding of the Moon's composition, also its geological history, and we will be piecing together what we know at this point and what ISRO as is saying. But remember, utilizing the Pragyan rover as part of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, ISRO has embarked on a journey to unravel mysteries hidden beneath the lunar terrain. It's an ambitious mission. The discovery of sulphur, in fact, might just be the first. Let me just quote ISRO's exact statement for you. It came in just a moments ago. Laser-induced breakdown spectroscope instrument on board the rover unambiguously confirms the presence of sulphur in the lunar surface near the South Pole through first ever in situ measurements. We will be breaking down uh, all those uh, terms for you and helping you better understand what this discovery really means. And to help us in better understanding the significance of the latest discovery, with us on the broadcast is our correspondent Siddharth MP. Siddharth, thanks very much for being here on the broadcast. You have been closely monitoring every milestone as far as the Chandrayaan-3 mission is concerned. Uh, break down for our viewers what ISRO is saying at this point and what the latest discovery really signifies. So, hello Molly, let me start by saying that uh, what has happened today is one of the breakthroughs by the laser-induced breakdown spectroscope. So, what this does is this is a piece of equipment that is meant to study the composition of the lunar soil. It is meant to study the, uh, the sort of uh, chemical composition. It's sort of meant to look into the elemental composition. It sort of fires a laser beam. It sort of... Uh, you know, vaporizes the lunar rock and then it studies based on the uh, lunar vapor that arises from it, or the vapor from the lunar rock. It analyzes that and then looks into what are the chemicals that are present on the lunar surface. So this is one way of understanding what are the elements available. This is also one way of discovering hydrogen. This is one way of discovering water. So most importantly, hydrogen and water are crucial because for future lunar exploration missions, hydrogen and water, or rather hydrogen and oxygen, are seen as two potential rocket fuels. So we must remember that when water ice is present, water ice can be processed and super cooled to get cryogenic rocket fuels, which is super cooled hydrogen, super cooled oxygen. So if in case there is a future lunar settlement on the moon, the presence of liquid hydrogen and the presence of liquid oxygen, in fact, it will be present, uh, present as water ice. If they can be processed into super chilled liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, that is used as a potential rocket fuel. This is one of the major breakthroughs. So, Isro has said that um, search for hydrogen is underway. Oxygen, of course, as expected, is detected. In addition to this, there are also several uh, metals or rather several elements, including um, iron. Then uh, there is, of course, manganese and silica. All of these are detected. There's also aluminum. There's also calcium, iron. All of these are detected on the lunar surface. But the most significant, uh, to tell you, Molly, is the presence of sulfur. Most important aspect about sulfur, we are referring to papers from NASA research from a couple of decades ago. So how do you build something on the moon? If you want to settle down on the moon, how do astronauts build a settlement? Obviously, it's impractical to take all the construction material or, you know, fabricated structures from Earth. It's too expensive. It's impractical. But what do you have to do to be able to construct something on the moon? You need to look for metals and materials that are available that can perhaps help you construct something. So sulfur is one of the key materials according to NASA. So when we look at sulfur and its potential, what it holds in store, so it is said by NASA itself in some of their research papers that uh, the lunar regolith or the lunar soil and what is available in the lunar soil can be taken. It can be processed along with uh, sulfur. That is, of course, now uh, unambiguously confirmed by Chandrayaan. So sulfur can be mixed with the lunar soil. Some processing can be done on the moon's surface itself. And once that process is complete, it's possible to derive sulfur-based bricks using lunar soil. 
So once that discovery is possible, this is of course theory that we are talking about. So once that is made possible, it is easy to create structures right. on the lunar surface. You can make bricks and then that will lead to structures, Molly, on the lunar surface. Right. Uh, stay with me, Siddharth, uh, as we continue to track the latest coming in uh, regarding the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Uh, we just uh, put out on our screen uh, the statement that's come in from ISRO. Let's also get in a quick reaction from Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, who's also with us on the broadcast from Washington, D.C. Thanks very much for being here. Um, it is a significant development, as our correspondent was just pointing out. If you can just share with us your initial reaction uh, to what uh, ISRO's latest discovery really means and why this is going to be uh, just the beginning as far as the milestones of Chandrayaan-3 mission are concerned. So let's. I, I, I was hearing the last part of the conversation. I think we need to back up a little bit. So uh, this is laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. It's there in the two last NASA rovers, and so we work on that. We. Um, so so what is this instrument really measuring? It's not measuring mineralogy. It's measuring um, the elemental chemistry, which means that see you might have sulfur in multifarious min mineral forms. So so we don't really know what is the exact mineralogy of the sulfur. It can be sulfur dioxide, it can be um, some other sulfur mineral. We do not really know. And um, so so I would temper the excitement. So not talk about um, much larger plans of how to build colonies, etc. It's just that you have the first measurement. There will, I'm sure there'll be many more measurements. We need to know in what mineral form the sulfur is. Right. And then from there, you can try to um, see that, well, is it a form which is extractable or, or not? So it, it will involve quite a few. And the reason you don't see hydrogen is, remember there was a crater and, and the um, rover drove past the crater because of trafficability issues. So the reason you don't find hydrogen may be that it, it can be another element um, compounds as well but it can also be in water and that that crater might have the ice but unfortunately if you get into the crater you might not be able to climb out so so this is an ongoing process and and one thing you should remember i don't quite recall off the top of my head um, the the energy that the annual the the daily budget of energy that the um, rover has is limited and all these rovers which are solar powered so what it can do is also in terms of driving and analysis is limited. So it's a right. it's a it's a very good discovery. Yes, hmm. go ahead. Sure. I just want to understand from you uh, whether or not this is the first time such a discovery has been made, and a lot of curiosity attached to. Um, the way in which this uh, mission has been carried out and how there are still days to go uh, for that rover to send back data, to send back images. Uh, so first of all, just share with us uh, uh, the significance of this discovery and whether or not this is the first time it's been made. See, I don't think this is the first time. I think there are like, I don't know, a few kgs, tens of kgs of Apollo samples. You know, um, when I came here as a grad student, I studied those Apollo samples in thin sections. I don't think this is the first sulfur-based mineral. And we don't know, again, the mineral. Hmm. Uh, it's not the first time sulfur is being found on the moon. And the second thing which you asked is, yes, of course, the mission has been conducted very well. Um, and, you know, it's you will get many results. But, um, but you know, it's all part of a long, a long hike. So you get, right. all this has to be... Um, you know, figured out what it means, um, right? So, so for the, for example, temperature profile was very interesting. So, you know, we talk about going and settling on the moon, but the temperature on the moon is seventy degrees centigrade. If it's fifty degrees centigrade in, in I don't know somewhere on Earth, we are very very uncomfortable. So, um, so so there are bits and pieces which will come out, and Absolutely. then we have to add together the whole picture. Right, uh, Dr. Ghosh, uh, quickly before I let you go, uh, if you can just uh, help us understand how exactly uh, these uh, uh, detections really take place and the process that's really followed. Right, so so here you, so it's okay. For the alpha proton X-ray spectrometer, you take the spectrum, you find the spec, you see the spectrum which comes out and you try to match it with your existing library of spectrums. 
Um, for the laser, you zap a laser, and then, as your correspondent was explaining, the air around it um, um, becomes high temperature, and then the gases. You try to analyze what came out. So these are all spectroscopic methods, and you have to be uh, calibrated, and you need to have uh, calibrated samples in your library, and that's how you match. Um, so it's a fascinating process. Takes years, though. Indeed, and we will be. Uh keeping a very close watch on the latest coming in from the Indian Space Research Organization. For now, we're leaving it there for the moment, Dr. Ghosh, and also thanking our correspondents at Heart MP for getting us more on those inputs coming in from ISRO. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.